Welcome back. In today's video, we have two submissions from Anumanu for Pixlot feedback. And there's also one important thing that I think is the most important thing in Pixlot that I'd like to share. So what is the most important thing? It's quite simple. It's having fun. I don't care at which level you are, a complete beginner or a professional. If you are not having fun, you are so missing the whole point. Life is very short for all of us. And it's important that we enjoy life as is. So pixel art as a first form of art should be for fun. Yes, a lot of people approach it for its technicality and because it's easy to learn and develop games with it. And I understand that. But even developing games requires that you are having fun developing the games. You are never going to achieve a mastery of a certain skill if you are not enjoying the process. So whatever you do, just remember, enjoy the process. Take a moment, take a deep breath and remember that you are here to enjoy the process. With that out of the way, let's jump into the feedback. So first, let's talk about this cute little bug. We have an animation. I would say it's an idle animation and you can see it has six frames. It's upscaled. So there's that. But I do believe that it's good as is. You don't need to rework it in any other way. I will show you perhaps a couple of different things that you can do. So let's talk about the first one. First one, because you have this blinking, creating light on the tentacles and you have shaded the outline a bit brighter. I would say make it a bit more so. Take the same color of this light and shade perhaps the tip of the nose. I suppose these are nostrils. So perhaps this is the tip of the nose and you can even shade this entire top portion so you are creating some kind of a blinking effect with the light that is fading because now you have two frames the second one i've left the same and the first one is a lot brighter so you will have this effect you can also see here in the preview that with this you are creating a light that is more impactful when it turns on and then fades slowly so that's one tip on how you can achieve this effect i'm not sure if you were aiming to achieve it but nonetheless there it is for the second tip i will take this entire sprite and i will downsize it to 33 percent like so and i'd like to show you what you can do for example for the legs if you want to make them a bit more rounder which is a bit easier on the eyes erase two pixels on the edges and you will create a curve which looks quite a bit softer and I think it fits a bit more nicely into the arms which also use this type of style. So now you have the same style of legs and arms. And if you want to do the same thing to the head, for example, you can certainly do so like that as well. So it's just a stylistic choice. It's not necessary. Perhaps you were really going for that blocky type of feeling and that's totally fine. So there it is. Those are the only two tips I'd like to share about this character. I think it's totally fine as is. So let's move on to the next image. And here is the second image. We have a very colorful scenery that was created just for fun. And that's the most important thing. Just create, let your creativity flow. And I can see it right here because there are so many vibrant colors and it's so rich wherever i look at it there's something to look at so that by itself looks perfect just as an art piece if you just want to take it for fun okay i wouldn't change anything however if you want to approach this as an illustration and you want to modify a few things i'd like to share a couple of things that will help you out in the future that can also be applied in future illustrations so what is the first tip the first tip would be reflections on the water do you see them so we have one, two, three, and these type of reflections that happen always happen towards our eyes. So wherever we are, that's where the reflection should go from the source of the light. In this example, I'm not sure where the light source is. I am noticing a blocky moon, which is quite interesting. So if this was a light source and we were here, this highlight on the water, the reflections would go towards us. So like that, and we wouldn't have these other things. So with, with that as a main thing to fix, I'll first remove everything except this main one. So I'll speed this one up. So here we have the before and after. And now because we have only one reflection on the water, now we know that the moon should be right above it. And our eyes are right here in the image or to be more precise here on the horizon line. Before I do that, 
and because we don't have any space for the moon we have to create some space for the moon itself and before i create the space i think i can touch upon another tip and that would be contrast if i create a layer above and i paint everything in black and change the layer mode to color you will notice the values and the value is something that is very important because it's essentially how something bright or dark is and when it comes to composition it's really important that we use the value as some sort of a design tool for example in games you are designing levels while keeping in mind what can the player see and you are designing the levels in such a way that you want to guide the player subconsciously let's say towards a specific goal we can do the same thing in illustrations and we do that by using composition and contrast and in case of compositions whatever is the brightest will take away our attention first so wherever is the brightest this will catch our eyes the first so if i take a look at this base image you see there's a lot of brightness so i'm not sure where to look at first i'm not sure what is the most important thing in the subject and again because you're creating this for fun it's not important but nonetheless this is a practical tip for the future so i'm removing all these brighter portions and i want to focus them on a specific point point. and it's also important that we have a separate foreground midground and background so for example if i turn this off what would be the foreground well the foreground would be this tree over here what would be the midground well the midground is usually where our subject is and where the most important thing in the image is i would say we have this kind of a robot perhaps in this barrel that it's floating so maybe this is our main subject so the migrant will also include him but also this lake or perhaps the sea i'm not sure and perhaps few of these trees and everything rest would be the part of the background okay so keeping those things in mind i will darken the foreground so you will see how it will uh, look like so i will select this entire tree and the island and darken everything quite a bit so i'll speed this one up so there we go what i did was select this so in case i want to paint over it now and perhaps make it a bit larger i will paint only over this entire portion so the easy way how i can darken everything here and create a different contrast is by going to edit adjustments and here we have three options so for this one i'll use brightness and contrast so i want to make everything a bit darker perhaps this should be fine and just make the contrast just a bit higher just ever so slightly there we go now i also want to remove these highlights on the rocks and also for these flowers i'd like to make them darker so what i'll do is i'll remove the highlights on them and try to remove the details just a little bit so there we go and since this is darker now you can see the before and after i'm slowly creating the contrast if you can see the value so this is now a bit darker than everything else you can see that i'm slowly guiding our eyes towards the middle so what is the next thing i will do well we have these clouds i believe in the background which are quite bright so again i want to focus these brighter colors here and i want to erase them everywhere else so let's go and do just that i will select these colors and pick a darker color Perhaps I don't need such a large brush. I think this should do just fine. I quite like the colors here. So it's quite something interesting. Okay, there we go. Now I want to remove this tree because remember we need to make at least some space for the moon. So let's remove it. So I'll just paint over this quickly. I'm just creating some kind of waves to indicate these types of clouds, let's say, because I see you have that four which curves. I think I'd like to make this little fella a bit brighter. So again, I'm selecting colors. You can go to edit, adjustments, brightness, saturation. I want to make him a bit darker and a bit higher contrast. There you go. So now we can also see him a bit better because previously he blended quite a bit with the, with the water and now we can see him a bit more clearly. Now we can move this moon and we can place it, let's say, down here. Now I have to rework this portion a little bit. And now we have to remove the old moon. All right, there we go. So here we have the before and after so far. 
okay and the last thing i would like to do is push some of these floating island trees further away in the background you definitely had the right approach when you have used less details for these islands and you have made them smaller the further away they are but you didn't apply this same thing to the tree itself so we need to make these things a bit darker just like you did on this tiny little small island here you should have done the same thing in my opinion and the other things if you wanted to create a more depth i'm going to select all of these floating islands that i think could be way more in the background and i'm going to darken them so i'll just select all of them so all of these brighter tones will get covered up with the shadow tone now let's go to this larger one and finally for the tree itself i'd like to use a bit more darker colors and use less colors overall there we go so now we have the comparison of before and after we can clearly see that some of them are further away in the background and you can use this same approach to render each and every single island a bit more differently so overall if i look at the value right now you can see how everything is bright i'm not sure where to look at and right now i'm focusing all of my attention here in the middle so right here you have the power the tools to create and guide the eyes of the viewer so it's a bit more conscious process and in my opinion not something that you should be worrying about when you are just creating for fun when you're creating for fun just ignore everything and let the imagination flow when it comes to creating something specific and you want to design something with consciously these are the couple of tips that you should be keeping in mind so one use contrast to guide the eyes of the viewer along with the composition and the second one the smaller one reflections should follow wherever is the light source and wherever your eyes are so once more this is the before and this is after so what i essentially wanted to do is take your chaotic wild colorful imagination and its creativity and just try to constrict it just ever so slightly so i can guide the eyes of the viewer wherever i want to guide them if you want to achieve the opposite effect and you specifically don't want to guide the viewer's eyes and you want him to be confused these type of things are excellent for example in games where you are trying to find a specific hidden object or a specific hidden person in the image like lost waldo or something like that you want chaotic you want something like this so everything has its purpose when it comes to design but again the most important thing is to have fun so with that i will conclude this today's video and remember as always relax enjoy and have fun